want to review this twin tip markers uh, set of 16 by Jackson's. They were on promotion when I or rather on sale when I um, bought them. So I think they went down to £10. So I thought that was a bargain for 16 markers. And I like the fact that they're water-based ink, so they're not alcohol markers, which means they're likely not to bleed through um, paper like alcohol markers tend to do. The reason I got those is because currently I have the Copic markers um, the Chow Copic markers and I also have a few of the um, Tombow markers. Now the Chow markers are alcohol based and the Tombow are um, I think they're water they're water soluble uh, they're not alcohol based and basically um, I didn't want to ruin the colors or the tips of both of them if that makes sense and I needed um, like water soluble markers uh, to incorporate in mixed media um, paintings. So with something that is only £10 for 16 colors with double ended uh, tip, I thought that's brilliant. So um, it's also odorless and non-toxic and the nib size is one millimeter bullet and two millimeter fiber tip for fine and broad mark making. So to me that was fantastic. Also I like how they're kept uh, very compact, which is uh, in my case uh, a must have. And um, let's just take them out, put them in color order and just swatch them out and see how they are. And if you like them, and if they're still available on sale, then you could just get those. To show you the nib, basically this is the nib that I like to use with watercolor or for watercolor effect and then this is the bullet nib. So I'm going to just swatch them out with this nib. Wow, the color is beautiful, very, very vibrant. And then I'm going to add some water and see how we get on. The only thing is I wish it would sort of explain which tip is what, so it doesn't say. And also they don't have any colors in them. It would be lovely if they were titled um, a certain color name. Kind of makes it delicious when you have color names. So... They're very bright. I like that a lot. I wonder if I should go with water immediately or later. Hmm. Let's try now. I'm using my Jackson's Quill Tan Zero. Let's see how much color we can get. Yeah, that's quite nice. The color flow is good. Really beautiful colors. Okay, I'm going to continue with the other. So this is like a magenta type of a color. This is beautiful pink oh my gosh this is like a raspberry bright pink gorgeous color so i think the less you let them dry and the sooner you go in you can pull out the color quite a bit um, i'm also looking at the line so if you can see here the line is still quite strong 
so they're quite staining and I obviously wouldn't want to have that hard line if I'm doing like a watercolor effect however looking at the previous two the line seems to be dissolving as the water sits there so let's have a look if these hard lines will dissolve in a bit as well Now this is a pastel pink. The light, the thing I like about this set, it's got lovely pastels and also very bright colors as well. So quite often uh, you either need to buy a separate pastel set or a bright set. The fact that you have both um, possibilities here is really good. I think this might be a gray actually. So I'll put it at the end. Okay, I'm going to reorganize these colors again. So maybe I'll put the purple in, the blue, something like that maybe. Hmm. This color is not working here. Okay, I'm gonna move it here. Okay, like that. I'm just going to move them to one side. And let's do the pinks. So the pastels, they're not moving or they're not, they don't have as much color. They're very, very light. Do straight after there we go okay so if we do straight after it's uh, doing a much better job okay dark blue straight in and there is no hard line okay so basically don't let it sit This is a beautiful, super bright, kind of peacock blue type of a color. These are super intense. These remind me of the Hydra, um, Hydra's Dr. P.H. Martin's watercolors with their intensity. This is a beautiful turquoise. Then we have a dark green. I'd say like, um, it's close to a Viridian. Then we have a light green. Oh, this is beautiful, a grass green. Or like a spring green. Or it would be an apple green if you were looking at the Derwent Ink Tense pencils. Okay, let's look at the grey now. So I don't think you'll be able to see much because it's very, very light, very pastel. Okay. And then we have a brown. Let's check this brown out. So just a normal kind of brown, nothing too extraordinary. But with water, it actually becomes a beautiful kind of skin tone. And you could build it up to a darker one, or if you really water it out, it would be a beautiful also light um, concasion skin tone and finally black let's see how intense it is so out of the marker super intense and then oh that's a beautiful black so it's a black with red undertone 
I like that. Okay, so I'm going to dry them quickly and come back. Okay, so they're dry now. Um, I want to try something else on a different piece of paper. So this one was the Cuddy uh, Papers 210 uh, GSM Smooth. Um, with the hardcover, that's my swatch book basically. I keep all of my swatches. There aren't that many pages left anymore. Um, so yeah, so this is that. And what I wanted to just check is these two colors. And in fact, these two as well. They seem very kind of like the line just stayed there, so quite staining and hard to move. So I wonder if I am not going to let them stand there on the paper, but just do it straight away. Let me just pick these three colors, see if it's going to be different. Also, I want to see whether they're going to mix um, nicely with each other. So I'm just going to move my um, sketchbook. So this is a different paper. It's also a lot whiter. This is a um, tiger. No, so it's it's actually even worse on this paper. So this is a low key kind of affordable paper, and it's doing even worse. Um, so it goes straight away inside the paper. I can see it sort of going inside it rather than staying and even though I'm going with the water straight away that hard edge is not moving. So your paper will also kind of determine how your art is going. So a paper that is sized and coated a bit that will be better for these markers because then it won't be going inside the fibers, it'll be sitting on top. So there is really no point for me trying to blend these, but on this paper anyway, but I will do it back on this paper. So I'm going to blend a couple of colors together. Uh, let's just pick them. I'll go with the orange, red, Okay, I'll do these three colors just for fun. And I'm going to just play around a little. Leave a little bit of space between them. So, as it happens, the memory card got full, so I'm not sure at which point. I was basically just um, looking at this bit here, just creating some gradient and trying to see how the colors blend. They do blend beautifully, um, except for these two colors are super staining. I hope I'm not repeating myself because I don't know at which point uh, the recording stopped. So... Um, yeah, they blend beautifully, but you just need to be aware of some of the colors that are quite staining and I'll just point them out to you. These are the most staining colors in the entire set, along with these two, them being obviously quite pastel, but still I can see a very hard edge there. Um, the colors that are um, a little bit visible are these. A um, little bit here, not as much and then a bit of here. Then these colors are absolutely fine. So the yellow, orange, red, and then this blue is quite good, I'd say. I mean, sort of can see a very fainty line here, but it's it's okay. This is great, this is fantastic, no line at all. Gray, provided there is not much color payoff, but can't see a uh, bit of line there, we said. And then the black, uh, no lines. So they do, look quite pretty together 
uh, just keep in mind that some of them are pretty staining and that you won't be able to get rid of that hard line. But it depends what you're painting. If you're painting some sort of shapes and you actually want the shapes to come through and still stay on there, then you, this could be to your advantage. So yeah, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed it and found it somewhat useful. Um, I definitely don't regret uh, purchasing them because I think for £10, 16 um markers double-sided is a fantastic um you know price you can also if you are into brush lettering you sorry <laughs> you can also practice some of your brush lettering with these because of the nib and um the other thing like i said because they're only 10 pounds i don't feel too precious about them and i can simply um mix them with my other mediums and um not feel like you know i'm, I'm ruining a really expensive marker so for that reason the colors are also really good um i like the bright colors and this is a beautiful teal as well so yeah quite happy with this set so thanks for watching and see you soon